great evening. Well, I've been watching um, this gypsy thing where uh, the woman that makes all of their wedding dresses and uh, now it's the uh, big Irish communions. And oh my goodness. Now, for those that don't know, gypsies originated um, in India, from northern India. And then they migrated and they intermingled with so many other cultures. So we have Hungarian, we have Irish, we have English, we have Spanish, so many different types of gypsies and they all stem originally from India. Now what's interesting is a lot of the gypsy language goes back to Sanskrit, yes. Um, even Hungarian, uh, the, the, some of their words are still from Sanskrit, which is really interesting. And then they're very uh, into the Catholicism, okay? Now, in this one, well, another thing I was going to say about it as well, that um, I think it's in, is it France? They have a big procession. Maybe it's not France. Maybe it's, uh, no, maybe it is. They have a big procession and the gypsies worship the Black Madonna. Okay. Now, I think what happened was they, they incorporated, because they're from India, you know, Kali into the Black Madonna. Okay, so I think that's the way that worked. But they are very into the Catholic Catholic religion for the most part. Um, I think, now I know that Irish are Catholic, but all of the, all of the gypsies are very religious, very religious. Now here in the big Irish communions, oh my goodness, I don't know where people get the money for this, but many of the gypsy communities, the first communion, elaborate, elaborate affairs, and they buy these children, these dresses, like a wedding dress, I mean, just over the top, all these Swarovski crystals and just <laughs> insane. I don't know where they get the money because these things are hundreds and hundreds of dollars for each outfit. Now, also in gypsy communities, they're very, very strict. Now we see some gypsy communities and you look at these girls and they're like, you know, half dressed out there gyrating, but they're, but in the gypsies community, even though they look like, you know, I mean, really, <laughs> it's pretty, they're very, um, very, very staid, and they are to be virgins when they get married. And I mean, they really adhere to this. Um, so it's a very odd thing. You'll see these girls out there just gyrating and, and looking so sexy and this and that. But they have to, they're remaining a virgin and their parents and their brothers watch over them like hawks. And uh, now things are starting to change a little bit. Uh, some of the girls are wanting to work and stuff, but really uh, most of the gypsy cultures, the women are expected to, they get married very, very young. They'll get married 14, 15 years old, 16 years old. They have a huge elaborate wedding. But then after that, their whole function, have children, clean, take care of the children, and and that's it. Their whole function is to take care of the husband, the children, and uh, if they're living in a a van, a, a caravan, they call it a caravan. Uh, another interesting thing is they won't have a bathroom 
in the caravan, okay? They will not have a bathroom in their their van, their their caravan there. And I, that's also interesting. Um, so yeah, just uh, you watch the culture and uh, from one to another, like uh, you see in in uh, Spain, the gypsies and things very different. They they adapt to the culture of the place that they're living. Hungarian gypsies. They have Spanish gypsies. They have the Irish gypsies. One thing I love about the um, Irish gypsies and stuff, they have those horses, the Frisia. The most beautiful horses on the planet are the ones these gypsies have, the Frisia horse. If you've never seen one, look it up. Oh my goodness, they are absolutely breathtakingly gorgeous. Okay, so anyway, just very interesting the way the cultures have evolved coming from India and then integrating with the different areas that they moved into, yet they still maintain a gypsy culture. So I, I don't know if you, but I really am interested in all types of cultures and uh, what people are interested in and how it manifests in their daily life. But uh, yeah, interesting, um, interesting to see. So anyway, I'm gonna get back and watch the uh, big Irish communions and these little girls, I mean, they are so excited. I can't imagine being a little girl and having this beautiful, dresses made with all the Swarovski crystals and all of that in your first communion and uh, but it's nice that in a way that they do that because their their religious uh, holding is so important you know and I think I think that's great I don't care which religion you're from if you are orientated to God and being better person moving forward, wanting to know God, uh, you know, I can't fault any of them, okay? Um, so, you know, people that want to cause these big divisions because somebody calls God by a different name, okay, and it's got to be my religion or it's all fake and it's all demonic and it's all hate, you know, these haters can need to get a life. God is God, okay? So, you know, if they need to try to downplay and call everybody else demonic, then they have a problem, okay? They have a serious problem. So I'm gonna leave that there. I'm gonna get back to watching these big Irish communions and uh, these little girls come in and they know exactly what they want their dress to look like, how they want their cake, you know. And uh, again, you just see, I don't know, like I said, I have no idea where they can get the money for these elaborate dresses because they buy one for their first communion They'll buy it for birthday, big celebration. They have uh, sometimes a special coming together where the uh, boys and girls can kind of meet each other. And they, they go to this special thing to see if they can find their future husband or wife. <laughs> yeah, at a very young age, it's, it's crazy. But that's their tradition. That's the way they go. Now, another one I watched was the woman that does all of these, um, all of these fabulous dresses. She wanted to take ten of the um, travelers, of the gypsies, to teach them to to make these clothing. Give them that opportunity because she's very into the the gypsy culture wanting to help them to move forward. And uh, so there were 
10 girls and she said, even if I can get one of them to change their life, it's worth it. And oh my goodness, everything she went through with these girls, they didn't know, they, they're taken out of school really young. So she had to teach them to read, to write, and um, to, how to interact with other ones. Now, all they were all gypsies, they were from different gypsy uh, culture, some Irish, some English, and, and they don't get along. <laughs> yeah. They're like at each other's throats, and oh my goodness, you know, just the drama, the drama, and trying to get them to understand if you have work, you have to be here at a specific time, okay? You need to work with others, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so, Anyway, at the end of it, she did wind up with, she was going to have two girls, but she wound up with three girls that she was going to keep them uh, and, and to change their lives so they could have this job and they could, you know, have money for themselves. And, and uh, yeah, so really she's dedicated to this, but very interesting thing. Um, but yeah, in one way, it's sad because the uh, a lot of the girls are not getting an education. Part of it is because you're a traveler. Now I know what it's like to to move. My my father was a musician and stuff. We moved a lot. I went to it, one year in school. I went to numerous schools in a year. Numerous. I I can't even. You don't even want to know. <laughs> so, you know, I'm kind of used to moving. I think that's one reason, you know, I enjoy my traveling. I enjoy being in my van. I, you know, I like to go and see different places. You know, uh, growing up, I was not used to being in one place for a long established time. So, uh yeah, I think the longest I lived somewhere was when I went in high school. I actually had four years in the same school. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> the rest of it, forget it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Might move two, three times in a year, at least two, three schools, and then you're trying to catch up and, you know, doing all of that. But... Uh, so I know what it's like to, to move a lot and, you know, um, have, to have that. Uh, but yeah, it's just interesting, the gypsy culture. Um, yeah. Anyway, on that note, I'm going to get back to the communion ones where they're doing these elaborate outfits for their first communion. I'm just amazed at, at what, they, now I wonder what do they do with these dresses, okay? Especially the ones, the the travelers that are living in, in the uh, travel trailers, okay? I wouldn't even have a place here to put one of those big dresses they have for those weddings. <laughs> I don't know where they, what do they do with this stuff, okay? What do they do with it after they've had their wedding, okay? And these other big affairs that they have, they always, they have to have a new outfit and hundreds of dollars. Uh, I just like, <laughs> oh my goodness. So anyway, I'm going to get back and enjoy this. Like I said, I like to watch the different cultures and, and how it goes and stuff. It's interesting. Um, now, some of the gypsy culture is really interesting, and some of it is kind of, you know, like I said, there's so many different factions. You can't just lump everybody into one thing, one category. Uh, we do have some factions that are scammers out there. I mean, just, you know, rip-off artists, but not all of them are like that. 
Now, I have to credit my getting back into music because of a gypsy, okay? Because of Canute Reyes from the Gypsy Kings, okay? Went to see them play, and uh, after they were done, he, he's going, come here, come here. And Sid and and I went there, and he invited us back up to where he was at, okay? up to his hotel and we sat there and did music until they left in the next morning. So I got the concert and then we had private concert afterwards. <laughs> it was great fun. So it got me back into doing music again. And so I have to say, um, I, I really say because of Canute Reyes, that I'm doing my music, okay? I'm doing my music. Um, so, uh, such a nice guy, such a gentleman. His brothers, yeah, <laughs> they were behind the scenes party hardy, you know, but uh, Canute is not like that, you know. He, very much a gentleman, and we sat there and did music. Now, how we communicated, I don't know, because he doesn't speak English. <laughs> but we managed to have a communication. And again, just a really, really nice guy. Okay. And so I have to credit a gypsy with getting me back to playing music. Okay. Um, so thank you to Canute. Okay, and I hope he's doing well. He's no longer uh, performing with his brothers. Knut's the eldest, um, so he decided that he wasn't going to travel anymore. He's staying in, what is it, Ayers, Ayers France? Is where he lives, up in the, I think in a mountainous kind of region of France. So anyway, but um, I have to thank him for that, okay? Have to thank him for that. So on that note, I'm going to leave this here, and I'm going to go back and watch the big Irish communions, <laughs> watching these little kids, and their eyes just light up, you know, with their first communion. And um, I just think that's really really sweet and to have that starting as a young child have that uh, connection with the spiritual path and they do take it very seriously they they baptize their children their first communion i mean absolutely this is a foundation in their lives okay so no matter what you say about the rest of it they do have that strong connection and a union with that and belief, okay? So I'm going to leave this here. Love and light. See you online.